Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Another day, another trip to Jaguar. This time it's for somewhat of a major service on the F-Type. Quite a costly one and one that um, yeah, I've been dreading for a little while. Let's, uh, let's get over to Jaguar. Let's have a look at exactly what's involved in that major service, how much it costs and why we're paying main dealership prices for the privilege. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel by hitting that button down the bottom and stay tuned. So today we're taking the F-Type for its 72,000 mile or 86 month service. It's bonkers to think that this car is that old now. It hasn't done that amount of mileage. It's done 27,000 miles, which is still probably higher than I'd want it to be, but it's about enjoying the car, smiles per mile or smiles per gallon. You know, it's all about using the car and getting out in it. It's ticked around that year anniversary. It's time for another service. And we're off to Jaguar, main dealer, to pay for that service. But first, we're going to stop in, make a quick detour, grab something. Anyone who's seen me go to the dealership before probably guess what this is. Just going to grab something and then get on down to Jaguar. A few little treats for the people at the dealership. Look after the people that look after you. I'm so confused by the weather. It was beautiful at the weekend. I was over at Goodwood. It was sunny. It was fresh, but it was beautiful. And now we've got sleet with snow forecast for later on in the day. Not optimum driving conditions for a Jaguar F-Type without winter tyres on it. So what's involved in the 96,000 mile service? I think I've been saying 86. I'm talking gibberish. 96,000 miles. So for that, we get oil and filter. We get a check of the coolant. Well, they will also uh, look at the washer fluid and steering fluid, make sure that's in, in the correct levels. Replace the pollen filter, replace the air filters. There's two on the F-Type, one in each side of the wheel arches down the front there. So the air filters for the engine, they do not, well, they might replace the brake fluid every three years, regardless of mileage. So I'd expect to see the brake fluid changed on this. This will be the spark plugs as well. So the supercharger will have to come off to change the spark plugs. Replace the supercharger drive belt every six years on 96,000 miles, so I'd expect to see that done. Replace the accessory drive belt is every nine years, so I wouldn't expect to see that done. And I'm also expecting to see the rear differential oil changed on this service. So two fairly big items, the spark plugs and the rear diff fluid. I know for the spark plugs there's quite a lot you've got to take apart to actually get to that part of the engine. And then the rear diff fluid isn't done as standard on every service. There's a couple of big ticket items there. But anyway, let's get over there. Let's get it booked in and let's see how long it's going to take. So we're here at Jaguar. I need to remember two things. I need to remember to ask them not to update the software, which I'll come on to in a little bit. And also to not wash the car, which I'll also come on to in a little bit. But I need to remember to ask them those two things when I check it in. So let's go and get it booked in. And I'm going to crack on with a bit of work with a coffee. The next day. So full disclosure. It is the following day. We're back home. The car's back. It's hibernating. It's back on its trickle charge. And the service is complete. The timings didn't really work out. It's entirely my fault, but Jaguar had it booked in for later in the day. So I didn't want to sit in the dealership all day working. So they were very kind as to drop me back whilst the service was being done. And they actually picked me up to collect the car much later in the day. It was pitch black and it would have been pretty hard to film. So it's back home, all the work's been complete. Let's have a talk about a couple of those items I was mentioning before we dropped it off. So before I start talking about the cost, which actually is very interesting because I did get a quote from an independent to do this as well. So before we talk about money, let's talk about why I didn't want a software update and why I didn't want them to wash the car. And some of this might be pretty obvious to some of you, Others it may not, but for me, they're two really big points when this car goes into the dealership. So first and foremost, there was a period of time where Jaguar were applying software updates to the ECU of these cars to reduce the amount of exhaust noise to preserve the lifespan of the catalytic converters. It's very well known in the F-Type community that a lot of people didn't want this. The soundtrack, the theatre of the exhaust...
is a big reason as to why a lot of people bought this car. So every time I go in, I remind them I don't want that software update. I don't know if it's an outstanding item on this car, but I'd rather ask because it's irreversible. At least if I've asked, it's not going on the car. If it does, <laughs> that's another conversation that we need to have. And then secondly, I asked them not to wash the car. This has been detailed, it's been ceramic coated, it gets washed in a manner that is sympathetic to that. I'm not saying Jaguar wouldn't take care of the car, but if it's being washed by someone who does this on mass, on volume, with used cloths or not clean cloths, it's me just being OCD. I get it. Probably a few of you are the same out there, but I would rather either have this car washed by the people who detail the car or wash this myself, and then at least I know if anything goes wrong, I know where that's gone wrong. It just avoids awkward conversations and heartache down the line. I'm taking shelter in the car because the weather outside is awful. So let's talk about the cost. I went to the main dealer and it cost me £777.55 for that major service, which is a lot of money. It's, it's no surprise. It's always been there on the horizon. It's been a known entity since we got the car. It's not a nice way to spend £777, but it's a known entity. It's not like it's broadsided me. Now, interestingly, I got a price from an independent dealer um, to do this, a Jaguar specialist, for them to undertake the same service. And I was quite surprised by what came back, actually. Now, I had an email quotation sent back to me from this independent Jaguar specialist to undertake exactly the same service. All the same items, complete mirror of what the main dealer would have done. Now, I was expecting this to come in a bit cheaper. It's actually come out significantly more expensive, and I'll run through why. So they quoted for the base service, just the service, £480 plus VAT, totaling £576, which, okay, we're off to a good start, we're, we're cheaper. Then they came back to me and said, oh, by the way, that doesn't include your spark plugs. They're £17.46 each plus VAT, you need eight. £167.62 in addition, bringing the total to £743.62. So we're now slightly cheaper, marginally. But then they came back and said, oh, by the way, it didn't include the spark plugs, and it also didn't include the labour to fit the spark plugs, and that's charged at £95 an hour plus VAT. We anticipate two hours, totalling another £228 bringing the grand total of the estimate for this service, and it's an estimate, bear in mind, not a quotation, of £971.62, which for me is, just makes it totally pointless going to an independent rather than the main dealer. There's also a conversation to be had about main dealer servicing history and stamps, or electronic online servicing history, for your car. Going to the dealership preserves that main dealer history. Not having those stamps or that servicing history behind your car, in recent surveys it says will reduce the value of the car by up to 20%. So if we go middle of the road at 10%, by trying to save a couple of hundred pounds on the service, if I could find it cheaper elsewhere, I'm saving cash up front, but I'm inadvertently devaluing the car down the line should I want to move it on. So there's a really good conversation to be had there about the benefits of keeping that main dealer service history. It's also worth mentioning, do I think the main dealer does any better or any worse job than the next garage you go to? That's impossible to answer, isn't it? It depends on the individual, it depends on who's working on the car, and it depends on the level of care and service and attention they give to it. So I think that's a really tricky one to quantify. As long as you find a garage that's reputable, that you know does good work and works for you, then absolutely go and use them. For me, I've got a really good relationship, sadly, with my local Jaguar main dealer, and they look after me. They kindly ran me back home to when this was going to be ready a bit later in the day than I anticipated, entirely my fault, and they came and picked me up to get the car later in the day because I didn't want anyone else driving this car. I'm a little bit precious of my pride and joy. So for that reason, it makes it entirely worth going to the main dealer. I've built up that relationship. I get the service. It's commercially viable. The money stacks up. So there we have it, guys. Sorry it's been quite a talky one. I've not been outside. The rain is, is hammering down. But hopefully that explains the logical thinking behind main dealer service history and the pros and cons as to why you would or wouldn't do that. 
I'm not saying any one approach is better or worse than the next, but for me, the main dealer service history fitted the needs that I have. But thanks for watching, guys. As always, I do appreciate the support this channel gets. I try to get around to as many of the comments as I can. So please like, comment, subscribe down the bottom there, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Yes, I could have gone to Quick Fit. Quick Fit. Quick Fit. Quick Fit. And had this serviced for probably 150 quid. Would I ever do that? Absolutely not. Nothing against Quick Fit before I get any anything through on email there. Okay.